One of the most common issues I always come face to face with whenever an e-commerce store owner contacts me for my Google Ads agency services or just to get extra help is that they don't know how to properly troubleshoot their Google Ads campaigns or they don't know exactly where they're going wrong. And a lot of the times you might actually be surprised to find out that the issue doesn't necessarily come from the campaign itself or what strategy they're using, but it rather stems from a very weak foundation which they have laid out for their e-commerce brand and of course for everybody that knows Google Ads or has worked with Google Ads for even a short amount of time they know how important things like conversion tracking codes things like properly connected accounts all of those things are when it comes to getting a long-term success and scale with Google Ads but unfortunately still e-commerce store owners don't know how to do it properly so this is going to be a series separated into two different parts this will be part one of doing all of the troubleshooting when it comes to Google Ads. This part will focus more on the back end side of things. The next part will focus more on the in-depth campaign side of things and exactly how to troubleshoot an actual campaign. So like I mentioned earlier, the actual troubleshooting doesn't always necessarily need to happen on the campaign level itself because you might not even realize that there's a lot of stuff going wrong in the back end. So let's kind of start off with that. First things first, troubleshooting is the number one thing also that e-commerce brands get wrong. I talk to a lot of e-commerce brands because I run a Google Ads marketing agency called Yoro Marketing, which if you're doing around $30,000 or more per month, you need just a little bit of extra help scaling to the next level, then go on to my website at yoromarketing.com and book a free call with me to see how we can possibly work together and make sure that you don't make mistakes like these ones, which I'm about to go over. But one possible reason why you're not able to really scale, why you're not able to hit those goals, dreams, aspirations, which you have for your e-commerce brand, especially with Google Ads, is just because you might be doing changes and tweaks on your campaigns, on your website that you think are working, but unfortunately, and don't ask me how I might know about that because I have done that often myself. But again, it kind of ends up in you going in bigger and bigger losses. So kind of take a step back and just analyze what you're doing, if it's the right way to do those things or if it's not the right way to do. And instead of just giving up, because this is what a lot of people that use Google Ads do, they don't find success because they think that whatever they're doing on the campaign level isn't working. So they give up on Google Ads. They think their store is special and it's not made for Google Ads, which is a big misconception onus because you fail to do it properly. That's the reason. But again, that's why you got to do proper troubleshooting. So before you give up, before you even think about giving up, watch this video again and again until you get everything that we're going over. But let's start off with the first and most basic thing where troubleshooting actually begins. And again, the reason why we're starting and going in a certain order is because these are the most common mistakes I always see. And this is how I really go about troubleshooting my own website. So the troubleshooting shooting phase for me begins on the website and it begins with checking the tracking codes because again 99.9% .9 of e-commerce brands actually get this wrong I have a special e-commerce brand open and the reason why I have it open is because I'm going to show you how I check about my conversion tracking and whether it's running properly or not so I have this special Chrome extension called Google Tag Assistant and it's actually called Google Tag Assistant Legacy so as you can see right here this is the blue little thing right here and it might not be necessarily available for you if you just type in Google Tag Assistant on Google, there might be another version. So try to get this legacy version. If it's not there, then just get the other one. But I really recommend you look into getting this legacy one. But what you want to do is you want to, first of all, enable it and then refresh the page if it doesn't show this. Because once you enable it and refresh, you should see all the tags firing. So you need to have certain tags installed on your Shopify store, on your e-commerce brand in general. Does it matter if it's a Shopify store or a WooCommerce, Wix store, whatever the case might be. There should only be really three different tags. First tag, it's something called the global site tag. If you click on it, it should give you like a Google Ads ID here. So this is directly associated with your Google Ads account. Very important to have because it records all of the clicks, visitors, etc., all the data which you need for your campaigns to work properly. So if you're not getting the right kind of data and on your account and you're not really sure that it's all correct, then this is where your issues most likely must be. But on the home page or on the product page, it should only be three tags firing, the global site tag, moving on to the remarketing tag. So again, Google Ads remarketing tag. And as you can see right here, it says to validate, please enter the feed ID. So Google Tag Assistant kind of detected some kind of issue with this 
this. Maybe there's no feed ID properly mentioned here, although I do see a conversion ID, so it's not always 100% accurate, but still, nonetheless, you would want to double check to make sure there is a remarketing tag. And the final one should be Google Analytics. So if you install this via Google Tag Manager, you should have Google Tag Manager here instead of these two. Maybe you might still have Google Ads remarketing tag and then the Google Tag Manager, but there should not be more than three to four conversion tracking tags firing on your homepage at least. A lot of people, seven, eight, 20, even a hundred different tags firing and that's just not the right way to go about this because you're probably recording a lot of incorrect data. You don't need that many tags in the first place unless you have different accounts that are recording all of the data. So if you have only one account for each, make sure there's only one tag installed for each and this is where troubleshooting begins. So again, if the data on your Google Ads account is not properly set up, not properly showing, it's all over the place, it most likely has to do with the conversion tracking tags and an issue that kind of stems right here. But make sure to start off with that, make sure all of the conversion tracking codes and everything is properly installed. I'm not gonna go in depth into how to do that here, but I have a lot of videos on my channel which go over that. But once you have done that properly, let's move on now to the Google Ads account itself. So a lot of the issues then start happening on the Google Ads side of things. So when it comes to Google Ads, you wanna be checking a few different things. First things first, go on over to Tools and Settings and under measurement, click on conversions. You gotta, first of all, make sure that you have the purchase conversion tag first and foremost, even if you don't have anything else here. It doesn't matter if you have add to cart, initiate checkout, whatever fancy things you might wanna install. The number one thing, if you don't have anything else, you should 100,000% have is the purchase conversion tag. Now here, I have two because the second one is enhanced conversion tracking. That's kind of a more in-depth kind of tracking. But if you don't have that in the beginning, you should still have the purchase conversion tag. So if you're not recording purchases properly, then you probably know that this is not set up properly. And you might want to check, hover over this and make sure it says recording conversions. If it says something like unverified, that just lets you know that it's not firing properly, especially if you already installed it a couple of days ago. So it does take about 24 to 48 hours to begin firing. But as you can see, this last fire today, everything is working properly. And if you do happen to have the purchase conversion track and a lot of other tags, make sure the main purchase conversion tag is also primary optimization. So under account optimization, this should always be primary. If it's anything besides primary, click on your conversion tracking tag under edit settings, go ahead and click on it. And right here, goals and action optimization, make sure this is primary action used for bidding optimization. Purchase should always be primary. If you're doing something like leads, it should be leads as the primary and everything else add to cart, enhanced conversion tracking should be secondary. So make sure you get that right because if you get that wrong, your entire conversion tracking will be messed up up, your campaigns will optimize for the wrong thing. And then you'll be in the comment section saying how bad I am, how my strategies don't work, and I just should quit e-commerce and go get a real job or something. So make sure you are doing a full check when it comes to actually the conversions. But we're not done there yet because once you have made sure that it's properly installed, you may have made sure that it's primary, you want to go in and make sure you have chosen the right attribution model. So in reality, I only believe in two different attribution models. In the beginning, it's last click. And then when you have a lot of sales, it's linear. Here. Do not do data driven. Do not do first click time decay position based. It's just not necessary. I mean, you can do it. It's up to you, but I just don't recommend it. It's it's not something I personally do. So again, when you don't have too much data, do last click. When you have a lot of data, do linear, and that's really all you should be doing. So make sure you're either using one or the other, nothing else. But once all of that has been checked, then by this point, you should know that there is no kind of issue with the conversion tracking. So if you're still facing issues with the data coming in, then it's most likely going back to issue number one, which was that you don't have properly installed conversion tracking tags on your website, or maybe you have too many. So this is where you should really kind of start from first check your website make sure there's only three or four tags then this and by the end of this if you have checked both things and everything is good then you are pretty much set to go you can invest a lot of money into google ads without worrying that the data you're getting is not accurate but this kind of brings me to the next and final point of google ads itself at least and that is the linked account so within the linked account uh, one major issue i see is that a lot of e-commerce brands who come to me they either don't have google analytics installed or they don't have google merchant center installed i mean this store went above and beyond and they also have YouTube installed. So let's take a moment to clap for this e-commerce store because this is not really the common norm for a lot of e-commerce brands. But if you don't have Google Analytics installed, you're going to miss out on a lot of data gathering. Your account and your campaigns will not be properly 
probably optimize and Google Merchant Center. I mean, that's just like a given, right? How are you going to run ads on Google without a Google Merchant Center? But one kind of concerning thing is there are two accounts linked here. So you always want to have one account linked for each one. So Google Analytics, make sure only one account linked. If we go inside Google Analytics, you got to make sure that whatever account is popping up here that's currently linked it has the right kind of ID. So it should start with a UA number just like this one does right here. Go on to your Google Analytics account and make sure that UA uh, ID is the same one. So you should be able to see it within the section if you just open the drop down menu and same thing with Google Merchant Center. So again, and very important that you don't mess it up because once you mess it up, you're going to get a lot of incorrect data and all of these accounts won't be getting the same data as you get with Google Ads and it just creates this big mess. So again, make sure the Google Merchant Center account is properly linked and, and you can kind of look at these numbers right here so within google merchant center just on the top left that's the account id make sure that's the one that's popping up here for the linked account at least and that is the one so that's good to go the reason why this has two google merchant centers is because one website is the different country so the next website is for the netherlands only so that's really how things go you want to have one to one ratio but once you have checked all of those things up then your google ads account is pretty much set up so by this time you already know your website has everything that it needs your Google Ads account already has what it needs. Now we move on to the Google Merchant Center, the number one section where people just like to mess it up for whatever reason when that is the section you should not be messing up because you don't want to get suspended and have to deal with all those things that come after a suspension. So first things first, when it comes to the Google Merchant Center, what you want to be troubleshooting is if you have all of the policies set up properly. So one easy way to check is just click on the wrench icon on the top right and start by going to each page on under the tools section. So shipping and returns. If we go to shipping and returns, we can see that it tells us to add the shipping services policies. So all of these policies we already have added for shipping. And if there's anything else that you want to add, you can also add that here. Move on down to regions. We should also be adding some policies here if there are certain policies which it requires sales tax business information etc etc so an uh, easy way to check what policies you might need is to actually go inside the shopping experience scorecard program and once you're inside that it will tell you exactly what you need to be looking at so within the shopping scorecard program if we just kind of hover over these and click on each one it should let us know exactly what we have and what we don't have so for some of you it might say that you need to set it up and for others it might not even say this because you already have everything set up and you are the one of the top one percentile of e-commerce or owners who likes to get things right good on you but for the rest of the people make sure that you have a set up a return policy so if you click on setup now it should take you directly to the return section of shipping and returns and this is where you go ahead and choose those return policies so you might not have anything here if you don't just click on add return policy if you already have some kind of policy just give it 30 days because the shopping scorecard program will check it after 30 days and let you into the program if things are met here but that's essentially what you need to be doing with your google merchant center in terms of troubleshooting because these things if you don't have them right you are going to get your account suspended and then of course that's ultimately going to impact your google ads campaigns because you're not going to have any campaigns running to begin with so that's why this is part of the troubleshooting process you want to kind of set it up accordingly and don't just end it right here go into business information shopping at setup free listings account settings account access preferences etc etc basically go through each one and i really recommend looking at something like shipping at setup business information to make sure all of the information provided here is accurate so same thing with free listing setup because you want to be eligible for these things. Google Merchant Center gives it to you for a reason and it's just going to help you in the long run just get extra sales. So that is again part of the troubleshooting process. Make sure you're going through each and make sure everything is properly set up. But once you have all of the other settings properly analyzed, everything is good to go with the Google Merchant Center. You're already completed with step number three when it comes to troubleshooting. The final step is actually going back to your Shopify store and within the feed app itself. So if we go on over to google shopping feed app so make sure this properly and just open it within your app store what you need to do is within the app section for this app make sure to go into google shopping settings so it's the section on the top which you can see right here under settings it's the first option sync settings from shopify also second option google shopping settings and now something called the buy on google settings so that's something completely different you definitely want to be looking at the first two so sync settings from shopify it's very important you make sure all the information here is what you want it to be and feel free to kind of do it similar to what I do. Of course, if it's a niche store, it makes it much easier for you to choose something like default product category, default 
called age group, gender, et cetera, et cetera. If it's not, you might want to kind of keep it broad. But for these settings, it's very important you choose it properly because if you choose it the wrong way, it's going to impact your feed, which is then going to impact your Google Ads campaign. So this is what you want to do. Just have a basic setup like this. Once you have that setup, go on over to Google Shopping Settings. And from here, just again, have a very, very basic setup. Sale price, make sure this is unchecked, very important because it's going to show the wrong price on your Google Ads campaigns. And it will, of course, impact your results. But make sure UTM tags are enabled. And there's nothing really else that you need to do unless you want to add additional countries here. But that's pretty much it right here. Bing shopping settings, all of these other things. You can feel free to check through them. Make sure they're properly set up. You can also go to integrations, tracking tags if you use some process to set up tracking. But that is pretty much it. You don't need to necessarily do anything here. But again, Again, make sure your website is properly set up for the troubleshooting process. Make sure you troubleshoot through Google Ads account, Google and Merchant Center, and then Google Analytics, which I didn't really cover here, but you just got to make sure it's properly installed. And finally, end it with the shopping feed app itself and make sure your Google Merchant Center feed is properly optimized. But that kind of completes the first part of troubleshooting your Google Ads campaigns. In the next part, we will go in much more in depth into your actual campaigns and figuring out how your results are, what to do based on the results and so forth. But again, very important you get the back end and all of this within part one that I mentioned correct before moving on to part two, because part two doesn't really make sense for you at all to look into or it's not going to get you much results at all if part one is all messed up. But again, if you're doing 30,000 or more per month in revenue, you need a little bit of extra help with all of these things and more when it comes to scaling. Go on to my website at yourmarketing.com and book a free call with me to see how we can make that happen. But if you found any type of value in this video, do me a quick favor and destroy the like button down below and subscribe if you haven't. And I will see you in my next video.